Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, this week we're gonna do my first reaction video. I'm just trying new stuff out, basically. And here we have a video from A Shaded View. And this video I saw for the first time a number of years ago. I was on the Maxfield website. If you guys don't know, Maxfield is like this exclusive boutique store in LA. A lot of celebrities shop there. There's a lot of big name brands that pretty much uh, became famous being sold at Maxfield and you know Amiri, Mike Amiri being one of them as well. You know you have guys like Jerry Lorenzo. Anyway let's just get into the video. Um, yeah. So where am I right now? Hi I'm Mike Amiri. You are in my showroom in Paris <laughs> during Men's Fashion Week. Uh, this is the first time we're showing internationally uh, the collection. We originally launched last year um, in Maxfield. Oh, great. Yeah. We uh, decided from the jump that we would stay exclusive with Maxfield for almost the first year. Uh -huh. And uh, there was no better, there was no better uh, pot to plant our seed in than uh, with Sarah and uh, Tommy. And uh, how did you start? You grew up in LA? Yeah, I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, so, if you don't know Maxfield, I mean, you know, if you're sold at Maxfield, you, you've kind of made it. If you're a smaller brand, you know, it's going to really break you um, out into the rest of the world. They're apparently the first ones that, you know, sold Yoji Yamamoto in the U.S. Um, it's just like this big boutique store that has a lot of tons of stuff, a lot of expensive stuff, streetwear, um, you know, they could be i mean if you if you say that like high street started at maxfield you can even say that you know it's it's just a really big powerful boutique store in la and you know jerry lorenzo is one of the guys that you know pretty much became as big as he is with you know that maxfield power pretty much behind them I was really into like punk rock with the culture there and um, a lot of my influences come from just growing up around Hollywood Boulevard and walking around. I spent so much time with my friends at night walking around because my parents both worked. So a lot of my aesthetics came from just hanging out um, with these kids on the street and just like um, just being like a punk pretty much. Mm -hmm. But little by little my, my tastes were kind of shaped around that. And as I grew up and I started to learn fashion and really study and, and figure things out, um, after many years of trying to figure it out, I, I learned to execute it at, at a better level. So um, what's, I guess what's really interesting about this brand is you have these 100-year-old fashion houses that are really influenced from Los Angeles and rock culture and punk culture. And um, they go ahead and make it in these Parisian ateliers that make it in Italy. I was like this punk kid who eventually learned how to execute at a Parisian level um, through many years. So it's not even my influence, it's me. It's really cool how the progress, the evolution of fashion, you know, a lot of fashion houses are doing collections based on streetwear. You know, you have like Virgil Abloh bringing street aesthetics into high fashion and Mike Miri he talks about how you know he, he's into punk rock he's into rock and roll you know all these kind of influences that are very much uh streetwear it's just really cool you know to kind of because a lot of the times when you see a brand you just see the logo slapped on him but you don't really get to see the the story behind them and to be able to see Mike Amiri kind of explaining what he's doing is just kind of cool you know super cool how many seasons two yeah two two so and um and what you're wearing is this part of it yeah this is a vintage vision skate t-shirt it's one of my favorite tees this is a cashmere cotton uh rib tank vintage this is the first pair of jeans I made myself when I called my friend. I said, I think I made something really cool. We should start a brand from this. And these are Rick Owens' first season of uh, Dunks that Nike told him he can't make anymore. So I bought seven pairs of these. I just want to go back, you know, Vision Streetwear. 
they're pretty much you know the first brand to use the the word streetwear and so i mean you know just that ode to the culture is super cool he's wearing um silk cotton ball shirt i uh collected bandanas from the rose bowl which is like the biggest uh, uh vintage lobby in los angeles and um i always loved this star pattern and i wanted to recreate that um, but not really recreate the full vintage from it. So we started with the silk cotton wool. We digitally printed it, put sterling silver uh, plated buttons on there. And then to take off the sheen, we hand sanded and highlighted the whole shirt. Wow. Yeah, I think a lot of our strength comes from our ability to execute these really, really small details that are very time consuming that a lot of the bigger brands don't want to do, or it's very difficult for them to do in such a mass way. Mm -hmm. um, but this is something we take like great pleasure in and we're able to make things our own. The tank top is a uh, cashmere cotton. Uh, the jeans are all made in Los Angeles. The denim is from Candiani in Milan, which we developed with them. It has a light stretch to it, but... His tank top is cashmere cotton, you know, just using exclusive materials. Um, it's very cool. I don't know how functional cashmere cotton is, but um, I guess in LA it's a lot drier, so it, it'll kind of be perfect, I guess, I'm assuming. It's still weighty, and we added beautiful plongee cow fringe on there. It's a big Steven Tyler fan, so I still, I still think he's super cool. And uh, yeah, I, a, lot, a lot of what we do, I always call it like half cowboy, half vampire. You know? That's good. Yeah, it's just such a weird, such a weird combo, but I s try to stick within that core. And I think the collection will always be with that California base. Mm -hmm. We have, we have, we don't plan on reinventing the collection every season. I probably. I just love how Mike Amiri is so humble. You know, like his his kindness, his nice, nice guy vibe just kind of seeps through even through the camera you know um the first time i saw this video it was just very very cool send it out to a wash house mm -hmm. instead we ended up starting our own wash house which just works for yeah. our atelier our first money we made actually spent to build this out so we could fully control all the distress all the repair all the relaxing all the Got your name on it like one of our most popular jeans this is the mx1 um mostly all Italian denim, all, the repairs, yeah. all made in Los Angeles. We use yeah, French plongee nice. leather, yeah. all hand pleated, which takes yeah. so long. Um, Grinded, and then we do all the stitch repair inside. It's a play off of a moto jean, but it's also mixed with like a grunge repaired, light waxing, almost like you stayed on the street and you sat down on the curb for a bit. So each part of the wax is put around the pockets or it's, it's put around the back where your, where your hands are rubbing. Such a cool detail and so much work put into my denim distressing. You know, with Levi's, you get a lot of the sort of, uh, you know, fades, but Amiri does that rock and roll type grungy vibe, which is super cool, mixed in with like motorcycle culture. Um, yeah, I mean, I. I really feel like a lot of the designers nowadays, like, to survive, they need that street, you know, uh, subculture element to it. Not just sort of high fashion, luxury type. It has to be kind of connected with some sort of, you know, culture, pretty much. Um, we all yeah, so, yeah. this is super cool. We brought in um, this uh, Loon Terry from Japan. We lined the sweater in Fuji silk. All the ribbing is made from cashmere cotton. We have sent in from Karayaji and then knit here in, La knit in Los Angeles. And then after we've made this beautiful garment, we send it to Joshua Tree, California, where it gets shot by shotguns. And just, <laughs> so. Riri zippers, cashmere, just luxury. And then shot. With shotguns. All of these are one at a time. Chicago at a time. 
Yeah. Chicago, oh, right, sure. and in Chicago yeah. where they have guns. So yeah. we create this beautiful garment um, out of the best materials in the world, and then we give it to some kids who are out in Joshua Tree smoking pot and shooting guns, and they blow it up and make it even more special and beautiful. <laughs> and I, it's another thing, I don't know who's going to do that, you know, who's going to go through that trouble, but I think it's so special. It's such a great, um, such a great story. Blowing it up with shotguns takes distressing to another level. Yeah, like Max Field and Colette in Paris, which doesn't exist anymore. But I mean, those are stores that, you know, um, I go to whenever I'm in town just to kind of check it out and just kind of soak everything in, you know, it's that's it for today. I just wanted to make a reaction video and also kind of share uh to you guys the type of stuff that you know i nerd out on you know going into like the rabbit hole of youtube fashion basically but um these days i'm just trying out different things and but yeah to all my subscribers thank you thank you for checking out all my videos every time and yeah if you like it please leave a like and subscribe yeah it's going to continue. And so see you next week. And I'll see you later. Ciao, ciao.